like to start by showing you a little video of my hometown. I love Bogota. I was born here, studied here, got married here. That's why I live here. I'm the one who jogs along cycle routes on Sundays, who knows what it's like to ride on the Buseta or Transmilenio, and who talks to taxi drivers who are always fans of your soccer team. I'm the one who has seen it grow and renew itself, the one who has gone out to march for peace, who has walked through it on Christmas with the excuse to see it all lit up. I'm the one who has gone to Monserrate, to El Museo del Oro, to the Botanical Garden, to Maloca, and to the Casa de la Moneda. I'm the one who takes out an umbrella in the sun and leaves it at home when it's raining to go running through puddles. I live in this city because it's my home. And home is the place where you have what you love. I love Bogota. So that place where I was born happens to be an amazing place. It is so cool that it's getting and attracting over 10 million people, you know, that are actually living there right now. Uh, that huge, huge crowd creates a problem, particularly because the city is growing horizontally. It's like a big, big flat pancake, you should say, or arepa, like we say in Colombia. And that arepa is creating a terrible problem in uh, traffic, pollution, the footprint, you know, the environment is huge. The commute, you know, the average commute for Bo uh, people in Bogota to go to work from their homes is an average of 75 to 90 minutes every day, back and forth. So the situation is really growing out of control. You could characterize it, you know, if you want to get technical as horizontal growth. That's a problem. It's the biggest problem among cities in emerging markets. So then, the obvious solution would be, clearly, to go high. You know, skyscrapers. Create conditions of walkability and the so-called livability, where people, you know, get to walk from their houses, you know, to work where people would have the parks, the restaurants, everything like in a little village around their place of work. That would be the ideal solution or the ideal Bogota. There's a saying, you know, that a developed country is not a place where the poor have cars, which is like the paradigm. It is truly a place where the rich people, you know, use public transportation like everybody else, you know. So that would be the, the ideal situation. Why, if the solution is so clear, and so many experts have gone to emerging countries like Colombia, because this problem, again, is common to every single emerging economy. Why is that nothing is being done? The obvious answer, you know, is always money. There is no money uh, in the government. Or there is, you know, but it's applied to other stuff. And uh, there's no bank financing, for example, for skyscrapers. The last skyscraper in Colombia, that actually bears the name of a bank, was built 40 years ago. 40 years ago, with this incredible population, you know, growing bigger and bigger. There's also no political consensus on solutions, you know, what should be done. You know, we hired experts, you know, from the US, we hired experts, you know, from France. Everybody has a saying, you know, but no one seems to understand or to come to a, an agreement as to what needs to be done. So the problem keeps growing, and there's a development bottleneck and a deepening of socioeconomic crisis, which is quite you know, a paradox, because the economies in emerging markets are booming. So there is this bottleneck you know, about how do we move forward with this. Then we thought that with so many people, you know, that the solution would be crowdfunding. We are fans of Kickstarter. You know, we saw how people, when they had a common objective, you know, got together and basically got it through, you know, thousands of projects in Kickstarter, you know, being funded. Problems that for us in Colombia weren't necessarily as relevant, as important, you know, as the uh, uh, issues that um, are funded here in Kickstarter, you know, we, when we were dealing with these mega problems. 
So we said, what if we apply it, you know, this crowdfunding concept to the solutions that we need? What if we fund a skyscraper and we start bringing people to downtown Bogota that are commuting, you know, as I was saying, all over the place? 1.7 million people go in every day and 1.7 million people go out every day, and only 120,000 people are living in downtown Bogota, which is absolutely insane. So, crowdfunding could be a source of real estate financing for innovative projects, like that one, like a skyscraper, or hopefully many skyscrapers that would you know, ease this bottleneck that we have in our country. Then, it would also create an intrinsical consensus for projects that have a positive impact on the community. It would also enable people to participate in profitable projects that were previously available to only the super rich and the institutional investors. There are assets that are, the best assets in real estate are categorized as institutional great assets. That basically means that they're privy to institutions. So in a way, the good assets with the good returns are secluded for big institutions. Why? Um, if we apply crowdfunding to these projects, the 99% is now the owner of this cool and inspiring project. There are certain myths about crowdfunding as well, that crowdfunding finances only small projects. We don't think so. As, as we will show you, that crowdfunding is also only for local communities. And that crowdfunding in real estate isn't safe. Why? Because traditionally, crowdfunding has been a little shady, you should say. You know? If these huge assets deliver so, so, such great results, why is that the dividend you know, when a REIT is so low? It's intermediation, you know, that's what somehow the equity or, or the money, not the equity, gets lost in the, in the middle of it. Um, and the biggest myth, you know, is that crowdfunding is only for financing iPhone docks, iPhone chargers, cool, watch, uh, cool watches, and T-shirts. You know, that really, while well, relevant, it is not our priority in Bogota. So, what do you need for a project to be successful in real estate funded with the crowd? It has to have a positive impact on the community. People need to be touched, you know, globally behind a certain project. It cannot be, you will not be funding casinos, you know, with the crowd. It also has to be self-sustainable and highly profitable because the crowd wants to basically create an impact on something, but they also are entitled to, to returns. That back then were privy, again, to institutions. So listen, you know, I'm going, to be fine, I'm going to be financing this project. I'm happy to do so. I'm happy that the impact on downtown Bogota is huge because it is a skyscraper, you know, that will fix X, Y, and Z. And since it is a, such a good deal because it has such a pent-up demand, I want a piece of the action. I'm entitled to a piece of the action. It's the basic principle behind the Ubuntu philosophy. Where I am, because you are. That changes also the concept of philanthropy. Um, it has to be transparent, you know? There's no monkey business anymore. It has to be handled by a third party fiduciary company that basically ensures that the capital from the crowd is safely handled. Because here is the issue. You may fool in traditional real estate one or two or three investors, you know, with the fees and with this and with that. But a crowd with transparency, chances are that somebody's going to raise the flag and say, listen, what's going on here? Where's, what's, what's happening? So it has to be absolutely transparent. And a third party, on behalf of the, the developer, should be ha handling the capital. And then, full disclosure. Full disclosure, you know, which is something that people are, what, what are you talking about? Full disclosure? So am I telling everybody how much money I'm making by structuring the full disclosure? That's an absolute must. So in sum, I think it's the time for crowdfunding to go big. 
We need to start, the crowd by definition is huge. Why is that we're treating crowdfunding for little things that are nice, which is okay. I'm not, I don't have anything against that, you know, I love it. But there's also many other things that could be financed with crowdfunding. Think big. For example, we could crowdfund, as I was saying, a skyscraper. But there's a lot of other things, you know, that we could crowdfund. Um, projects where we don't need to get permission from these old institutions. There is a project that we're working on in Bogota where we're buying houses for young upcoming artists that do not, have, do not have a place to live or work and we create these spaces for them to live and work and they pay us the rent with their art that we happen to buy at 50% of the commercial value. It's a good business for us, it's an amazing opportunity for them and we collectively are creating the biggest art collection of contemporary art in Colombia, just to give an idea. That project, when I went to an institution and I presented it to them five years ago, they look at me like, what is this guy talking about? You know, so that's the type of things that we can do. And the vision that, or you can even define, you know, the workspace, you know, uh, like we're doing in an office building as well. We said, you know, instead of focusing on the elegant building, the, 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 the typical project, you know, with fancy finishes, why don't we think about the quality of the lifestyle of the people that are going to be working there? How do we make them happy? And since we don't know about that, we decided to crowdsource the initiative for people to tell us through a platform with PSFK on how that environment should be. And then the crowd will fund it. We're on our third project already. But the most inspiring one to me is this amazing skyscraper that I have to credit, you know, to Vidi Promotores, the developer of this magnificent project and Venerando Lamelas, his president, who had the vision coming from Spain to identify this problem and decided to bring me in to put this crowd together. So I want to show you a little bit of Vidi Bacata, which is the largest skyscraper in Colombia in 40 years. It is the second tallest in Latin America, fully funded by the crowd, no bank financing, and happening as we speak. The Eiffel Tower was financed by Gustave Eiffel, the Empire State by John Jacob Raskov and Pierre Dupont, and the Burj Khalifa, currently the tallest skyscraper, was financed by the Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And the people who are funding the tallest building in Colombia are they, thousands of Colombians who believed in a way to make history in their city without depending on major corporations. Rather than an advertising campaign, we created a way to turn something that was not a product into one, a 66-story skyscraper, by dividing the skyscraper into thousands of identical parts called fides. The BD Bacata could be financed not by three tycoons, but by over 3,000 ordinary Colombians. As with every new and revolutionary idea, critics and skeptics did not take long to appear. However, we offered the public the greatest possible amount of information in every channel within our reach to explain everyone how any regular person may become a famous investor. The campaign covered television, BD Bacatá, el primer rascacielos del mundo construido por inversionistas famosos, comunes y corrientes. Press, magazines, digital media. And because it is a skyscraper financed by regular Colombians, it created quite a buzz. Free advertising spots in articles, news and magazines. Over 50,000 unique visitors per month in our online campaign and millions of Colombians exposed to the message. Over 3,000 Colombians are now BD Bacata investors. 255,000 million Colombian pesos were collected to finance the building. In 2014, welcome to BD Bacata, the biggest product in the world. So we. Thank you. 
So surprisingly so, you know, in, a, in an emerging country, uh, uh, too long known for the bad stuff, um, great things start to happen. You know, amazing potential, you know, in my country starts to kick in. Why is that? You know, we can connect now. There's technology, there's innovation, there's people like you. Because you guys, believe it or not, are the ones transforming the boring real estate industry, you know, that actually enables me not to wear ties every day now. Um, and then we said, listen, you know, let's push it a little bit further. Let's think even bigger, you know. But Bidi Bakata is already the, um, again, the world record, I think, in crowdfunding in real estate, as, as far as I know. As I know, I have not seen any other uh, project of that magnitude, you know, in the world, anywhere. So we said, let's push it a little bit more and let's define a city, you know. Let's crowdfund a city, an entire city, and get done with this problem. So today, literally today, we're launching in conjunction with PSFK again in Colombia right now as we speak what we call my ideal city, where people are telling us in a crowdsourcing platform how the city should look like. All the problems you know, that they can potentially identify with a constructive approach, with a positive attitude. And then we're certain that many solutions will arise from this platform so that we can crowdfund all these fantastic ideas that the population is going to provide us with. The power of the crowd is just huge. And that happens again thanks to you, the innovators that are taking the crowd and enabling it to transform everything. And in my field, I can say that it's already underway. Crowdfunding is trans transforming the way real estate is perceived and real estate is conceived. And sponsors like BD Promotores, who also happen to finance, you know, these crazy ideas of ours, are behind, you know, the success that we anticipate, you know, in the next generation of uh, real estate and investments. So think big. Think about cool projects. You're not limited anymore on what the institutional capital enables you to do. Anything that you can think of that touches everybody or a community and that is self-sustainable and profitable will be funded by the powerful crowd. Thank you very much.